So as Jason said, I'm Jared Quintz. I'm Senior Vice President and General Counsel with Baylor Renewable Energy, a large-scale solar development company based in Munich with headquarters here in Southern California. I want to take you guys back, all the way back, to December 16th, 2015. It feels like two months ago, and it was two months ago. And so I got to work that day, and it felt like any other day on the solar coaster. Uh, we had just acquired a 50 megawatt project that needed to be permitted, interconnected, and constructed by the end of 2016, unless the federal tax credit got extended. We had another 100 megawatts in our portfolio that needed to be permitted, interconnected, and commercially operating by the end of 2016, unless the federal tax credit got extended. And that day, we were sitting as an executive team and trying to figure out what to do if the federal tax credit didn't get extended. And so we spent about three hours talking, strategizing, and, and coming out of that, we felt actually pretty good that if it didn't get extended, that we'd be in pretty good shape as a, as a company with a large balance sheet, with a discerning palette for projects, and a, you know, sort of being nimble operationally, that there would be some opportunities to find some distressed projects, to sort of pick up some, some cheap assets potentially, and so I actually was hoping that it wouldn't. And so after three hours of planning, we get out of our meeting, and what happens? Three hours later, the federal tax credit gets extended. And so it presents, the extension of the tax credit presents challenges and opportunities for us as an industry. So I'd like to talk a little bit about both of those. From the opportunity standpoint, I think it's a really great opportunity for us as an industry to grow and mature. And for an industry that has sometimes act like a teenager, um, impetuous, unpredictable, sometimes a bit out of control, I think a little maturity will go a long way. And I think it'll mature because it allows companies like us to not only look at the next year, but the next five years. Uh, I think it presents an opportunity because investors, investors that were calling us every week in 2015 looking for projects, are now, looking, are now calling us every day looking for projects. The extension of tax credits provides them a level of certainty to where the investor community is eager for good and profitable projects, and I think that that will continue to be the case for the next several years. It presents an opportunity because I think it will continue to drive costs down to where we will be able to offer rates at PPA levels that are, that are on par with utility prices and potentially beneath the utility prices for years to come, not just here in California, but in other markets, and, and will expand the playing field to places that we didn't think were possible. But with opportunities, I think it also presents some challenges. I think that there are a lot of yahoos in the solar market, and I think a lot of us that have been in the market can attest to that. And I think that there will continue to be yahoos in the, in the solar market because there is this market for, for, for projects, and the valuations will continue to be high. Um, and so I think that presents a problem, a, a challenge, in terms of making sure that the projects that get developed are right and done correctly, um, and that the investors that invest in these projects um, make sure that they're investing in good projects. I also think that it, it presents a, a challenge in a little bit tangential way in that it may actually hinder some of the adoption of new technologies in the industry. Because as long as investors have projects that are stable and that are profitable and that are sort of the tried and true technologies that have, that have sort of built this industry over the last decade, there's going to be less appetite for new and innovative technologies because they just don't, they don't need to, to use those technologies to get those higher returns because the tried and true PV projects are getting what they need. So I think that that's one challenge that, that I think um, is a problem for the industry, but I think uh, in the long term, I think all will be good. Um, before I finish, I think I'll, I'll finish a little bit early. I have two, two bold predictions for the next year and beyond. One bad and one good. The bad one is I think one of these solar giants that went public over the last 10 years, one or more of them, are gonna file for bankruptcy. Saddled with a lot of debt, and the failed experiment of these yield codes over the last several years, I think we're, we're headed towards, towards some, some, some um, not necessarily consolidation, but some messiness in the market. But I think in the long term, I think it will help stabilize, and I think it'll be a good thing for the market. It'll be sort of spun as a disaster, but in the long run, I think it's good. Um, on the good side, I think someone out there, and hopefully someone in this room, is gonna figure out how to do small-scale commercial at scale. Um, and that means combining a strong customer acquisition, with standardized contracting and finding an investor that's out there, maybe you're out there there, that will that is going to take more risk, more risk on credits than other investors have to date. Because I think the small scale commercial solar space is ripe for the taking and no one's figured out how to do it. So thank you very much. Love to chat with you guys after.